My name is Dr. Paul Toot, president and founder of National Premed Consulting and author of the book Acing the Medical School Admission Process. Today I would like to welcome you and thank you so much for taking the time and investing in your future. I know that today you're going to benefit tremendously from the information that we're about to share today. Today we will be talking about how to gain more self-confidence. We will be looking at who needs more self-confidence. We'll focus on how to develop self-confidence. Then we'll look at the differences between self-confidence and arrogance. And finally, we'll look at the benefits of self-confidence to the pre-med student. Who needs more self-confidence? The definition of self-confidence is believing that you can succeed in the objective at hand. Self-confidence is needed by everybody, and each of us need to get as much self-confidence as we can have. So all of us can use more self-confidence. Where do we start? You start from right where you are right now. No matter where you are, no matter what level of self-confidence you have, you can build upon that. And that's what this talk is about. It is about building your self-confidence. I want to give you a word of caution right from the start. I want you to be very careful who you expose yourself to when you are developing your self-confidence. At the beginning of your journey of developing self-confidence, your self-confidence is very fragile. And if you expose it to the wrong individuals, it could be damaged. So I want you to take time and I want you to plan and be very strategic as to who you expose yourself to in the areas where you are developing your self-confidence. How to develop self-confidence? I want you to start with what you are good at. Self-confidence is an area where you need to be very gradual in building it. The foundation that you build is extremely important. So I want you to start in areas where you are good at. If you are good in a particular area, you are more likely to succeed in doing things in that area. I want you also to be honest about where you are in the area of self-confidence. If you know that you have a problem feeling confident when exposing yourself to others, then I want you to at least acknowledge that. If you know that your self-confidence on a scale of 1 to 10 is about a 5 or a 7, I want you to acknowledge that too. And I want you to realize that no matter where you are in the area of self-confidence, it can be improved. I want you to start small and grow slowly. Don't attempt to speak to an audience of 100 people if you're not comfortable speaking to an audience of 4 people. Start small. Start taking baby steps and eventually as you become more comfortable, you can then improve and do things that require more of your self-confidence. I want you to think of self-confidence as a muscle. You start off small and you start off with light weights as you build that muscle. But as you build the muscle, it gets bigger and stronger and you can now lift more and more weight. The same is true for your self-confidence. Start small with the goal of getting much better. Remember, your self-confidence is a fragile thing, and we spoke about this earlier. Your self-confidence is something that, if you expose it to negative people, can be very, um, it can be hurt, and you can become impacted by this. So I don't want you to create a hindrance for yourself by just going out to the public. I want you to be very strategic. I want you to only surround yourself with positive people. I want you to um, gain the acceptance of others, but I want you to make sure that these are people who care about you and have your best interests at heart. 
Self-confidence versus arrogance. Definition of arrogance. Arrogance is defined as someone who is overbearing in their ability to do something. Another definition of arrogance is presuming that you can succeed in areas that require more than you're capable of doing. All of us know arrogant people, and I don't know anyone who likes being around anyone that is arrogant. Self-confidence is different than arrogance. You should be showing humility in self-confidence. Have any one of you been around anybody who is at the top of their game? Someone who is a professional in what they do. Those people at the top of their game are seldom arrogant. One of the goals of self-confidence is to be comfortable sharing your story. As a medical school admission expert, I work exclusively with individuals who want to get into medical school. And one of the number one things you must be able to do on your journey into getting into medical school is you must be comfortable sharing your story with others. There must be a level of self-confidence when you are engaging others in telling them about your story. If you are not comfortable or confident with your story, that shows and people are less likely to accept your story as true or to even want to hear your story. Remember, nobody likes a person who brags, so don't be a bragger. Someone who brags is actually trying to hide their own feelings of inadequacy and lack of self-worth. If you know you're good at something, really good at something, and you're confident, well then you don't have to tell the world. The world will see. The benefits of self-confidence. People are attracted to people who are self-confident. So if you are a self-confident individual, people will migrate to you. You don't need to go out there and tell everybody, hey, look at me, look at what I can do. Because individuals will want to come over to be in your presence simply because you are self-confident and they want to be like you. So they will migrate to you. Do a good job and the world will beat a path to your door. Self-confidence builds on itself. So, as we said earlier, the foundation that you are making in the area of self-confidence is very important because every time you do something and you succeed at it, it makes it easier for you to do the next thing. And you want to build on that. So, self-confidence actually builds on itself. When you're self-confident, you allow yourself time to focus on what is important. So by simply being self-confident, you are able to not waste energy and time worrying about what other people think because you know about your capability. Now I want to inject a point right here. Make sure that your self-confidence is based on fact. Don't have a false sense of self-confidence. That's delusional. Actually have a record of things that you have done. And then that is what you're basing your self-confidence upon. Self-confidence allows you to be more successful. As we said earlier, it builds on itself. So by doing things that you are successful at, you are more likely to be more successful. Studies have shown that success begets success. Individuals who are successful at one thing are more likely to attempt new things and then also more likely to be successful at them. At National Premier Consulting, we love to give you more than you ever thought you were going to get. So today, our bonuses for this talk are as follows. Do something that you're good at each day. I want you to follow the rule of doing what you're good at each and every day. Because if you do something that you're good at, we used the analogy earlier about the muscle, you're building the muscle of self-confidence. By doing things that you are good at, not only will you succeed in it, but you're more likely to get positive reinforcement from others. And by getting positive reinforcement from others, you're more likely to attempt that situation again. And, and by attempting it again, you'll succeed in it again. And you can see how it's a cycle by doing something that you enjoy each and every day. I want you to get into the habit of succeeding. 
expand your proficiencies. I want you now that you are good in an area, I want you to branch out in that area. Now keep focus in the area. So if you're good at music, now I want you to branch out in the field of music. Do something a little different, but staying in your field of expertise. Have objective evaluation from someone you trust. At National Premier Consulting, we do this for our clients. But if you're not going to use our services, I encourage you to use the services of somebody, a friend, a family member, who can be objective and actually tell you how you're doing in the area of self-confidence. Don't attempt everything. Nobody wants a jack-of-all-trade master of none. You want to be known as being successful and good in an area, in a particular field. Do things you have a realistic chance of succeeding in. So I want you to attempt things that you know you're going to have a high probability of succeeding in. If you are a long distance runner, I don't want you to go and try to be a long distance swimmer. Stick in running. If you're good at running, you may want to change it up a bit and instead of doing the 5K, you want to do a 10K or 15K, but stay in the field of running because you're good at that already. That's just an analogy. I want to thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us. And I know that the information that we shared, if you use it, will be beneficial to you. Um, I want you to contact us at National Premier Consulting. You can reach us at our website, www.nationalpremierconsulting.com. You can always reach us on Facebook at National Premier Consulting on Facebook. You can reach us on YouTube, Premier Coach on YouTube and on Twitter also at pre-med coach my facebook personal facebook page is dr paul Tudor. i want to encourage you to visit us on facebook and like us today and i want you to um stay tuned to facebook i want to share something with you right now that i'm excited about we are starting our webinar series and i know that it's going to benefit all of those who are serious about becoming students in medical schools we can help you with the admission process and this webinar is exclusively for individuals who want to succeed in getting into medical school and as i told some of my audience on the last podcast a few podcasts back there are about forty-two thousand applicants each year to the allopathic schools in america and only eighteen thousand or so get accepted so the odds of getting accepted into medical school are less than 50%. I want to help you. So I want to encourage you to be on the lookout on Facebook for our webinar. And this webinar is going to be jam-packed with stuff. So I want you to check us out. So stay tuned. Come on Facebook. Like us. Because we're going to be sending that out exclusively to individuals who are fans of our website on Facebook. So once again, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And like I tell all my clients, if you commit to success, success will be committed to you. Success to you. Success to you.